What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got a party cade. It's running a 60 in one. Let's take a look. Alright guys, it's been a while since I filmed a arcade one-up mod. Yes, I do mod RK when I'm talking way back, way, way, way back. That's honestly, I probably, I don't want to say that it's because my channel blew up because of the RK went up mods, but I do have quite a few years ago, I showed you how to mod a Street Fighter cabinet, how to do like the speaker mod and the stereo mod, uh, and those got a lot of views on it. So, you know, yes, I've been around RK went up since they started. I used to have a guy out in Jersey that had a warehouse that would actually get like returns and then flip them. I used to pay for a used Street Fighter cabinet. I used to pay 125 bucks. That was like in the box, but returned, and it really was flawless, nothing wrong with them. You do run the risk when you do play around with these returns, but I always modified them. I never did screen mods on them because honestly, you know, not to degrade you or anything, but taking an RK one up, let's say you get the regular RK one up and you put a 22 inch monitor in it or a 20 inch Dell, uh, I'm just the type of person where you might as well just get a full-size cabinet. But granted, it is a good way to get your feet wet. So I'm not knocking you. It's fine. It's just I still laugh to this day where people are getting these RK one-ups and they need a riser. And even with the riser, me standing at almost six feet tall, they're just not fun. They're, they're not. I'm done with RK one-ups. But I will still mod them. I don't really shoot too many videos on them because I don't want people to think that I'm the person that only mods RK one-ups. I would rather have people buy full-size RK cabinets that I build, but I do modify RK 1-Ups. I'm really shooting this video because we got a party cade. I've never seen this in person. This is like the wall cade, the one that you put on the wall. Um, customer messaged me, he came out from Jersey, told me, hey Vic, he actually messaged me honestly back in Christmas time, December. Asked me how much is it gonna cost to mod? I gave him a price, he goes, uh, it's a little bit too much out of my price range. I'll take a look somewhere else. And now we're in June. He, get, I guess he, he sent it to me and said, hey Vic, you know what, modify it now. I, I want to mod it. I said, okay, cool. Never seen it in person. I gave him a heads up. I said, listen, I never done one of these. So you got to be patient with it. Let me see what it is. It is very compact in size, but it works. The big kind of key detail, and I do plan to make this video. I'm not sure how I'm going to title it, but this right here, Modified, I would say a good part of it is using the DIY retro package that they have. Again, on the RK One Up forums and on Facebook, uh, the Facebook group, a lot of people are boasting about this DIY retro company that basically make it very easy for you to swap out your cabinets, whether it's a regular RK One Up or Partycade, or really, I think they're big on counter case. This is not sponsored by them. I wish it was, but it's not. Um, so, this is my full fledged kind of review. Talking about DIY Retro and this specific Partycade mod. Now, I'm also making this video because current up to date right now, the date I think is like June, I don't know, June 15? June 11. <laughs> Saturday, June 11. As of right now, DIY Retro does not have a video talking about the Partycade and how to mod it. They do have the package, but they do not have a video talking about how to mod it. So. Me personally, I know how to mod these things, but I was looking forward to a video because again, not many people know how to mod and you know, people are getting their feet wet. Honestly, it's a very cool cabinet. I, I actually dig it. Uh, I'm not really a fan of the idea of bolting this whole hanger thing on the wall because now you made a permanent mark on your wall if you don't like where it is and all that. But again, I don't have it on the wall. Customer left the bracket on his wall. He just, I just needed the cabinet, that's all it was. So again, there is currently no video on DIY Retro on how to modify this specifically, I did take their countercade mod. It's basically the same thing, but again, bigger cabinet, a little bit different. Take this as I took their kind of mod, I added stuff to it, and I did something to it that they do not show, which is utilizing the on and off switch. That was a big deal, especially for this specific company, company, co uh, customer, company. I don't think about company and customer. The big thing with this customer was, hey Vic, I need it where it's gotta look good, number one. He's like, I don't want like wires shooting out, I don't want like, you know, on and off switches being shown, cause 
DIY Retro, they give you this. And I'm gonna talk about it, they send you this. And as you can see, I did not use this, but they do basically give you your standard kind of plug in, plug out. Now you have to utilize this on and off switch to turn on and off the system. And again, they don't have a video on it. You really cannot put this in a good spot that isn't visible unless you do the power switch mod and shout out to my brother, B Kong, Kong's R Us. He's got a video dated a couple years back talking about how he took his Star Wars cabinet and utilized the stock on and off switch. I'll post it down below, obviously. Again, shout out B Kong. I've been on his streams. Love the dude. He's my homie. Basically, again, shout out to B Kong. Using his hack, I was able to keep the on and off switch working. That was honestly the number one thing. You do have to do a couple of things. I'll be honest, I'm not relying on DIY Retro to even give you this option or the parts for it. Again, you'll have to watch B Kong's video. It's not that difficult. Yes, it does get a little sketchy because you are talking about power wires, but as long as you're safe, you don't use it, you don't do this while it's plugged in, obviously, you're good to go. But again, utilizing the stock power switch was number one, the big kind of thing that I was concerned about. Again, customer has this on the wall, nothing's on this wall. It's just like a bare white wall with a stool and you gotta think, if you do put this, let's say underneath the cabinet, which is what I was thinking about, I was gonna put it under the cabinet on the bottom, you're gonna have a good maybe four or five inches of a power cord coming out and looping. So again, with this, and I'll show you everything, with their stock switch, I did not use this because if you look at B Kong's mod, he actually wires it to the switch and as you can see, you visibly don't see anything here. It's kind of enclosed. You only have these three here. I don't know how to wire the power switch to these three. Again, watch B Kong's video. You're basically gonna wind up needing to buy on Amazon. I have a couple here. You're gonna need to buy, I don't have it here. Hold on. You're gonna need to buy like these. This right here. This is what I usually put in all my cabinets. It's basically the same design. It's a rocker switch that goes here. I have the switch there. But your big, thing, your big thing is to have this bear here. And again, when you watch B Kong's video, you'll see how to wire it. So off the bat, again, not knocking DIY retro. Maybe they didn't think about it. But again, I think the best thing that you're gonna wanna do if you mod this, you're definitely gonna wanna do the on and off switch. Number one. Number two, big downside to it, but not DIY Retro's fault. It's really an RK one up thing. This cave right here has like the newer gen volume switch. First gen Street Fighter cabinets and all that had a kind of three, the, the volume switch was like three settings. It was off, medium, and then loud as hell. Not really loud, but you know what I mean. This right here utilizes the PCB on the RK one up that basically it's like, up, 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 or down, 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 down. And basically this had like the green meter on it. So the only thing that sucks now is that you cannot use the stock volume switch. This customer was big on volume. Hey Vic, sometimes I'm watching the game and the kids wanna play it, but I don't wanna hear Pac-Man, I wanna watch my game. What are we gonna do about the volume? And DIY does not supply this, but I do have a very secret volume knob up top. And that was the big deal again. We had to keep it clean, number one. Number two was the volume and number three was the power. And I knocked that out of the park. So again, I do have a secret volume knob. I'll take you, I'll get you out of selfie mode and I'll show you the volume knob and we'll take a quicker, closer look at the DIY Retro mod. All right, so now check it out. DIY Retro giving you a lot of stuff. I mean, honestly, besides the issue, the hiccup with the power, their mod is technically plug and play. Just a couple of things, again, that power switch mod and the speakers. They said, I think in the ad that they give you like, uh, it's not this. They give you apparently the wiring that would connect to the speakers, but the speakers are soldered. They're not like your standard arcade speaker that usually has, of course, I build arcades, my dudes. I have everything here. If their speaker is not like this where it has the tabs. RK went up has these hard soldered. So you would basically have to cut the connector to the speaker. I'll show you everything. You cut the connector to the speaker and then you basically tap into the whites coming out of the actual JAMA harness. That is to keep 
standard stock speaker and no volume knob but if you want to do the volume knob you're gonna to have to do my mod again there's the volume knob right there nice beautifully hidden is flush mount so all you see is the knob there and also i do have leds leds do not come supplied by diy retro i am also known i mean i dub myself the led king i got an led everything so there are leds on this again diy retro does not supply leds but if you think about the add-ons i added the leds and i added the volume rocker there so now real quick let's give it a test run i'm gonna push the power button we'll load up this pack man only because that has volume all the time and volume Again, I have my volume rocker right here. I'm basically just spinning the dial. And it's pretty loud. Again, using the stock speaker, basically there's an AUX, an auxiliary wire going from the 60 and one board up to the amplifier. And again, it translates to your knob. So pretty awesome stuff. So again, did everything the customer wanted. Got to keep it clean. No wires visible. LEDs look great. Yes, it is against the table right now. So you do see the LEDs here. But again, he's going to have it up against the wall. Let me show you what it looks like without the lights on. So you can see kind of the LEDs. Okay. So LEDs, as you can see, set to slow fade. Obviously, they have a remote. You could basically use the remote, change the channels, or I should say the colors on it. But I got LEDs basically on the top and on the bottom again this goes against the wall so this spread this led spread that's going up looks the same going down but obviously as you can see my table blocks it when it goes on the customer's wall it's going to look great but yes leds added by me and the volume switch which does not come with diy retros kit now take a look at the back still keeping it clean as always you got the stock panel there i got the modified hole here the customer, I'm gonna show it right now. The customer has a very unique setup. He actually got an electrician involved and he basically put an outlet inside the wall, an indented outlet. And originally when he had it, he sent me pictures of it. The stock arcade one up. And as you can see, the stock arcade one up comes with this power brick. So it might not be this exact one. I have a bunch there, but it's basically a power brick. And he had to actually get an electrician involved to basically have this power brick hidden behind the actual cabinet and plugged in. So he sent me the picture. He basically has the outlet on the right side, looking at the front of the cabinet, it's on the right side. So that's why I put this here. And as you can see, basically all I have coming out of the cabinet is one single power cable, no power bricks, one single power cable. So it is gonna be very great, very easy, flush wall mounted. And again, nothing up top as you can see you can see my volume knob much better there and again nothing on the bottom so again going back to diy retro setup they don't tell you where to put this i'm gonna open up the back panel so you can see what i did it's not i mean luckily i do have all the the wires nice neat covered it's not technically the way it should be but it does work especially for this again if you utilize this you might have to put a hole on the bottom of the cabinet going up but again there's also not too much room inside this cabinet so again i'm going to open up the back of it to show you guys how i have the pcb lined up the power supply and everything again diy retro really doesn't have a video your biggest tackle challenge is figuring out where to put this and again if you do put this on the rear that 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 cord is going to come out i mean every power cord especially the three prong is gonna have this thick bulk right here. I'm gonna show you right here. That's mine. That's on the cabinet here. Look at that. Look at that. That's how thick it's gonna come out. So now your wall cade is gonna be angled a little bit because of this. So again, they don't really tell you where to put this. I personally would not suggest putting it there because now again, your wall, your wall cade is gonna go out like that. It's gonna be crooked. So just keep that in mind. A big thing to, you know, keep in mind again clean as always you can see here my one little wire here i'm going to tuck it i'm going to actually glue it down here but that wire right there is the amp power and the speaker wire going to it in one wire so that i'm going to tuck around but basically your wall mount goes right there easy peasy all right we got the rear panel open right now we're going to take a close look just please keep in mind i still have to clean up the wiring honestly when it comes to wiring you have to go from here 
That means taking out the four screws. There's two screws here, two screws there. Lifting this vertically up because you can't really twist it up. The uh, joystick is so close to the edge. You're not gonna, you have to literally lift it straight up. So again, keep in mind, please, my wiring is still a little messy. I have to clean it up. But as you can see off the bat, we're gonna look at the LCD board, the converter board. That is the best I could do. There's no way around it. This wire is not long enough. You can't put it this way. Again, I do put the cardboard so it protects the metal, but that's in, zip tied in, glued in. That's not gonna go anywhere. And also, the back door kind of keeps it supported. On their countercade, they actually put the 60 in one against the back wall, but you cannot do it with this. There's just not enough room for this. So, the 60 in one must go on the bottom. I did it on the bottom left, looking at the rear. It's right on the bottom left. I used the legs, I actually glued down the legs so they stay down. 60 and one board is right against it. And on the right side, you do have the power supply here. The big thing, like I said, the big, big, big thing is this here. But again, all my wires are protected and covered, so no need to worry about anything. But that, yes, a little ghetto, but that is how I have the power laying and rested. Again, as you can see, look at how thick that, that cable is. You putting that on the back door, your wall cage is now gonna go out. And not to mention, I haven't seen it in person, but if you have it tilted, you might have the risk of this coming off the actual um, bar thing. So just keep that in mind, you gotta be careful. But yes, that is my solution to our power situation. That honestly is the only way. Using the stock power wire that comes with the RK1 up, it goes to the monitor, to the power supply. Again, following the countercade video, you'll be able to wire this thing up. It is perfectly fine. As you can see though, again, looking at B Kong's video, he actually attaches a six strip outlet. I don't have any outlets on this. I'm using all the power from their power supply there. So again, I have add-ons such as the amplifier, volume knob, and LEDs. So the LEDs are utilizing 12 volts, so there's a 12 volt port. My volume knob is utilizing five volts, there is a five volt port. So as you can see, it's one power wire in, going to the power supply, and then it branches out. So that power supply right now is powering the monitor the 60 and one board, my LEDs and my volume knob. So there is more stuff, like I said, I added to it. The only thing, which it, I mean, now let's talk about their button setup and what DIY Retro gives you. Again, buttons are pretty nice, can't lie. They do not have a click to them. They're, uh, it's almost like a leaf switch. So there's no actual micro switch. It's an all-in-one button built in the Prongs on this button are very small, very thin. They are not your standard arcade uh, micro switch sizes. Like they're not like this. They're very, very thin, very small uh, stuff. The only one thing I noticed, but then I thought about it later on. So DIY Retro, they like they rubber band all like the grounds together and your button inputs. The one big thing I noticed was their rubber band with the grounds. Again, 60 and ones, they usually give you a lot of ground wire daisy chains. Granted though, I think these guys are manually doing stuff because again, the ends are not your standard end size. So I think they're manually doing it. My only complaint was this. I started here obviously, so the ground loop was my complaint. Ground loop, so I start here, one, two, three. I was able to ground it, well they have the wire for the joystick, that's in but they only have two wires left for the buttons here. The one thing they missed, wiring from here to this button, you actually have to skip a daisy chain. What do I mean? So ground wires here, there's one ground wire that's gonna be bare hanging because their daisy chain isn't long enough. So skipping one, you now only have one ground left. What I had to do basically was cut a ground and extend it to reach these two buttons here. That was my only one complaint. Again, they have it all rubber banded as a bundle. One, two, three, joystick had the wire. So again, if you really think about it, jumping from here to here, you need to let one ground loop go. Basically it wasn't long enough. 
they should have added two extra grounds to be safe, but that's really my only one complaint. As far as like the 60 and one, they don't really talk or discuss about the 60 and one. You'll have to do some research on it. I've done many 60 and ones. Keep in mind when you do power off the system, you do lose the high scores. You could leave these on. 60 and ones are designed for commercial use. I have, I've seen these and I've built these where they, people leave them on. My only thing is I would not leave this on 24 seven because it's an RK one up. RK one ups and their screens are so notorious for just dying. I would never leave this on 24 seven. Whereas if you had a regular TV, I've done like Insignia 22 inch vertical mods. Those you could leave on 24 seven, not a big deal. Big thing again though with this and the RK one up is basically once the screen dies, you have to now contact RK one up and hope that they have backups or they have extras. You'll have to buy a new monitor and such. That's my only complaint when it comes to RK one ups. But for example, when you do get a 60 in one Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, I should say, and Galaga, they are always set to have extra lives. So you have to go in, move the dip switch. And I go into all the settings and I adjust these here to have three lives. These start with five lives, which is kind of annoying. But these now start with only three lives as they should. I also have, there's another like version of Pac-Man. Uh, I have that set up in the configuration as like speed Pac-Man. So I have it set to difficulty hard and speed fast. I leave Miss Pac-Man stock to normal. These are normal, but then like there's another duplicate. I have that one set to like speed and pack, like speed and um, le uh, yeah, no, it's speed and hardness, difficulty. Another thing, quick note on the joystick, great joystick, but you do have to move the plate to make it four way. They don't give it to you four way. It's an eight way stick. You have to push the plate, spin it. You have to actually take the plastic plate off the joystick and spin it. So again, they don't really go in depth on their videos on how to do that, but that's kind of standard, like basic stuff. Again, you got to take, if my camera focuses, you got to take the plastic off that plastic piece comes down off the joystick and then you fix it up and mod it. Uh, again, basic, basic stuff. So again, DIY retro, I do recommend them. They had everything. They shipped it within like a week. Can't complain about it. Again, besides the ground issue and the speaker issue, meaning I had to basically cut, I had to splice into the speaker on that. That was my only thing. Other than that, pretty solid stuff. I, you know, the customer is going to get back all this stuff. This is like the monitor. This is the PCB. This is the stock RK one up joystick that's glued in. But yeah. Big thing also, like I said, if you watch B Kong's video, you could even use the stock RK one up plugs. See that? That's the plug that's going to the ground. So worst case, if the, if the ground wasn't long enough, you could always splice into one of these and extend it. But essentially that is the buttons. They're kind of using like, this is an RK one up button. Again, no actual micro switch. It's almost like a leaf switch. The micro switch obviously is there, but it's not like an actual click, but yes. These are, all these are supplied by RK uh, DIY Retro. So these buttons are new, the white buttons are new. I do wish that they were player one and player two, but again, you could kind of see player one, player two here. So they just basically kept it white. But all in all, other than that, aside from the extra mods that I did, again, you are looking at a party cade with a 60 in one DIY Retro kit with my personal add-ons, which is the LEDs and the volume knob. Again, big thing to get out of this video if you do plan to buy their kit, they're going to send you that power brick. You're going to have to find out and where to put it. Or you could just, like I said, this right here, this is going to go like that. So this already sticks out a little bit. Then adding the power wire to it. Something to think about that they don't really, they don't have a video on it. Um, so they're probably like looking at it now like, oh, we got to fix a couple things. But all in all, solid mod. I like the pricing on it. They're cheap. You could get a 61 in them. I did offer to the customer a King of Air 512 Pandora box game, but he was like, Vic, I don't know, 90% of the games I don't know. I'd rather just keep with the 61. So he went with a 61 mod. There you guys have it. A party cade going out. Vic VP, game case arcades. I mod arcade one ups. I build arcades. I'll do everything. <laughs>